guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So first things first, apologies if the sound is off. I'm waiting for a new mic because mine has gone entirely fucky in the past few days and I'm starting to lose my temper. Anyway, that'll all be repaired by next video. What I wanted to talk about today is Scarlett Johansson and everything that's going on with the AI situation, which actually got more complicated without me barely even looking into it. So. Let me just catch you up in case you haven't seen what's going on. So Scarlett Johansson makes a statement on the open AI situation. Now, what is the open AI situation? We're going to get into that. So this is what Scarlett Johansson wrote. Last September, I received an offer from Sam Altman who wanted to hire me to voice the current chat GPT 4.0 system. He told me that he felt by my voicing the system, I could bridge the gap between tech companies and creatives and help consumers to feel comfortable with the seismic shift concerning humans and AI. He said he felt that my voice would be comforting to people. After much consideration and for personal reasons, I declined the offer. Nine months later, my friends and family and the general public noted how much the newest system named Sky sounded like me. When I heard the release demo, I was shocked, angered, and in disbelief that Mr. Altman would pursue a voice that sounded so eerily similar to mine that my closest friends and news outlets could not tell the difference. Mr. Altman even insinuated that the similarity was intentional tweeting a single word, her, a reference to the film in which I voiced a chat system, Samantha, who forms an intimate relationship with a human. Two days before the chat GPT 4.0 demo was released, Mr. Altman contacted my agent asking me to reconsider. Before we could connect, the system was out there. As a result of their actions, I was forced to hire legal counsel who wrote two letters to Mr. Altman and OpenAI setting out what they had done and asking them to detail the exact process by which they created the quote unquote sky voice. Consequently, OpenAI reluctantly agreed to take down the quote unquote sky voice. In a time when we're all grappling with deep fakes and the protection of our own likeness, our own work, our own identities, I believe these are questions that deserve absolute clarity. I look forward to a resolution in the form of transparency and the passage of appropriate legislation to help ensure that individual rights are protected. There's quite a lot to be said here. I think in and of itself, recontacting Scarlett Johansson, what was it, right before the release? I think that asking Johansson to reconsider that late in the game already kind of screams guilty just because it's like, okay, so you're asking her kind of desperately, I might add, last minute to reconsider and then the voice just happens to sound like her. And then you happen to tweet her, the movie where she basically is an AI system in the future. Also, complete side note, it's an excellent movie. One of my favorites, hands down. But you bring that up too, like everything is aligning. It seems kind of like you're trying to be shady, but more than anything, you just made yourself look guiltier and sketchier. Also because, I mean, it's very difficult to put a definite line on where does something sound too much like per this person? Where does it sound too much like that person? However, I think we've already crossed the line if news outlets and family and friends thought it was actually her, right? News outlets, meh. But if family and friends who know you better than anyone are like, is this you? We've crossed a line. Now, I don't know how to determine where that line is, but certainly it is going to get messy. At some point, I even wonder whether there just needs to be kind of like with ads on YouTube and Instagram, if there's a disclosure, if there's a similarity that this is not in fact person A, B, or C. And that in and of itself is complicated too. So basically I have no solutions. This was sketchy, this was shady. I thought this was it. So anyway, I was looking through the comments to see who this Altman fellow was before I actually looked into it myself before I had time to look into it myself, someone's like, oh, well, I'm not surprised based on what happened with his sister. And I was like, wait, what happened with the sister? And shit got, I, worse is not even the right word to use. Shit just got way, way more grim. I find in the comments, this tweet by Annie Altman. So the sister of Sam Altman. And she said, I'm not four years old with a 13 year old quote unquote brother climbing into my bed non-consensually anymore. You're welcome for helping you figure out your sexuality. I finally accepted that you've always been and always will be more scared of me than I've been of you. This has basically nothing to do with the concept of AI. And I don't think for me, much of this really had to do with AI as much as the idea 
of consenting to give your voice versus people taking something that's yours or replicating you to the point where people can't tell. It's really a question of consent, identity, all of that stuff. AI is part of the problem, but I don't really have much to comment on AI. My knowledge there is limited. So people are bringing up this now, which again, doesn't have anything to do with AI, but it does have to do with Sam Altman, who already at this point, I think, looks sketchy, let alone now is a criminal of sexual nature too, even though he also was a child at the time, according to this allegation. So then I started looking at Annie Altman's Twitter. Annie Altman tweeted a link to an article she wrote on Medium that says, how we do anything is how we do everything. So I'm gonna read it to you. I'll put a timestamp if you wanna skip and it'll be linked down below if you just wanna read it yourself. But it says, I've experienced drama like the open AI drama. I grew up in it. I was repeatedly told not to talk about it and to allow another person to remove my human agency. I've lived under my sibling's authority my whole life. The narrative of Annie is crazy and Annie doesn't know how to take care of herself is what I was raised and conditioned in. That narrative along with intentionally conditional love is what was used to control me my whole life. When I went no contact, I learned even more about the control he wielded. It's not just me, it's a social and professional circles too. It's terrifying how many people have told me privately they support me, but are terrified to speak publicly on my behalf. Since going in no contact for my living relatives in 2020, my literal and virtual life continue to be extremely restricted. I've had multiple accounts get hacked. My podcast ratings and YouTube views seem to be removed. My presence seems difficult to find on Google. I'm not sure how this is happening and I don't have the resources to investigate further. At one point recently, a high school faculty member from our same school spoke with me and attempted to convince me to break no contact. Going to no contact was far from an easy decision. I attempted every other possibility, including family therapy in early 2020. After two sessions together with my mother and brother, my therapist privately advised me that no contact was my best option, which I resisted for another four months. During this time, I was managing PCOS and repeat Achilles tendinopathy that severely limited my walking and normal movement abilities. I was also grieving our dad who died in May 2018. I quit a job because of being notified of money left to me from my dad and made a plan to take six months to kill my body. I notified my relatives of my health and my plan. While in the paperwork process, I was notified that the money was withheld from me until I'm in my 60s. Though separated, my parents were still legally married and so my mother had the surviving spouse option to ignore dad's wish to make me the primary beneficiary of his 401k. Dad had a known heart condition, but still had to work full time until his death in 2018. Dad was very involved in affordable housing and reconstruction of historic buildings in St. Louis city. I had asked my siblings for years to give our dad the financial help to stop working. Dad openly expressed his dream was to retire in Costa Rica. Jerry Altman died of a heart attack at age 67 without the dream his son could have fulfilled. While still very physically ill and simultaneously managing intense and horrific flashbacks from PTSD, I began in-person sex work in late 2020. I was unable to fully financially support myself with a virtual sex work I had already started and with unemployment benefits from California. I applied for unemployment in 2020 at first, not wanting to apply and clog up the process because of my millionaire relatives I naively assumed would help me and then was delayed in receiving benefits due to identity theft. I was too physically ill with PCOS and repeat Achilles tendinopathy that severely limited my walking and normal movement abilities. I also desperately needed money for physical therapy so I could become healthier and support myself in the future. I felt like a zombie getting through every day while budgeting how much labor my body and brain could manage. My sibling offered to buy me a home in 2021, reaching out with seemingly kind words after a year and a half of no contact. We spoke on the phone three times and through these conversations, I began to suspect the offer was another attempt at control. It seemed I would never have direct ownership of the house. Also, given the nature of my PTSD flashbacks, the house felt like an unsafe place to actually heal my mind and body. With regard to the current situation at OpenAI and with tech in general, I feel the drama is a red herring. The best case scenario is middle school style interpersonal drama with much higher money and power stakes. The worst case scenario is a distraction from something or some things that are more dangerous. Given my belief that how you do anything is how you do everything, and given the power of the technological revolution, I'm concerned with where and how that power is being inequitably distributed. I'm also concerned about who will benefit from that power and in what ways. I would love to see and support technology being used to equitably distribute basic human resources, which is far different from its current use. My intention in sharing my story is to share my most personal and human truth and to heal. In my own sharing, I wish to encourage others to find their truth and their healing. I seek sovereignty for myself and child me who was told to stay quiet about other people's secrets even when it made me physically ill. I aim to give others the information 
of my story while healing my own pains. My wish is to help others find their personal truth and healing from their pains. We're all human. We all advance as humans when we tell our story. Love, Annie. So prior to a day ago, as far as I see right now on Twitter, Annie Altman hadn't tweeted since 2023. So as of a day ago is basically when she came back and I don't know if it's entirely due to what's going on with Scarlett Johansson and wanting to voice her own story to relate back to Scarlett Johansson and everything that's going on with OpenAI. Anyway, all of this is extremely jarring and concerning, not only because the concept of the Scarlett Johansson thing of replicating someone's voice so similarly without their consent, then begging for their consent and then doing it anyway, creepy and weird. The entire question of the sexual abuse assault, I mean, what is there really to be said about that other than obviously there were no consequences that we know of that he faced. And the implication in the article was that Annie was always told to not say anything or that she was crazy. So I can only imagine no real consequence occurred aside from the consequences she endured. So all of this just feels like we're touching the tip of an iceberg. Now, like I said, the two things, the AI situation and what happened with his sister aren't directly related, but I do think, do we really want someone who doesn't seem to understand consent dealing with AI that includes shit like was mentioned, like deep fakes, like mimicking voices? I don't want to call it identity theft, but imagine someone makes a deep fake of you, including a voice that's not your voice, but that is replicated to sound basically exactly like your voice. It's concerning to me and I'm not one to be an alarmist about AI, though I'm not really a fan of it either. I'm pretty much just jaded about it. But this is all a very creepy precedent and I do not like where this is going. Since the ball has gone rolling with AI, like I said prior, we should have had rules set up to begin with and those rules could always be modified, but realistically there has been a shit show and not much good has come from it in my opinion. I can't really think of a lot of like, hey, AI is great stories. If you guys can, by all means, let me know because I would love to be wrong, but let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to my patrons as always and I'll catch you guys next time.